Max Moon, looking like a misguided attempt at a Whoa. Mega Man cosplay. What Ma in the fuck is I that? I thought that was like a little joke when he <laughs> put that. His name is Max Moon. <laughs> What is he though? Well, I, he look like a video game character from the '80s, bro. Wait a minute. My name is Max Moon. Dilo, hey, yeah. Clutch. I'm in the clutch. We in the clutch. It's even been clutch. You think that we suck? Your dreams are the luck. Your ship is just sunk. We turn off away. Ooh, yeah. See that my face is up in disgust because people talking a mess, but there's nothing to discuss. I'm just being honest. I'm keeping it a bug. Uh huh. We in the clutch. What's going on, Clutch? What? What up, what up, what up? What up? It's your boy Ross. And we're right in now. Clutch. Hey. hey. Back to Legend Gentleman of the Future today, you feel me? 10 worst gimmicks in WWE history. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a lot of. The worst gimmicks. A lot of mm. awful gimmicks, especially really? in the like 70s, 80s, even 90s. There was some like Very really charged. just. Like what the fuck is this? They was, <laughs> Come they on, was trying this. stuff. <laughs> they were, they were, they were just experimenting st with stuff, and you just when you look back at it, you like, that was awful. Yeah, it was awful then. It's it's definitely awful when you look look back at it now. So we're gonna check out some of these yeah, awful you, gimmicks, man. Got to crawl before you walk, though. You know. Nah, they were they were just just you know some some ideas. You just you know, be like, all right, I got you. that didn't work. Let it go. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's check it out. <laughs> Mitch should see it though. Actually, let's go. The Sportster. A gimmick can definitely make or break a wrestler's career. While not every wrestler needs one, a great gimmick can propel a star man. to the stratosphere, like a Kane or Undertaker. Yeah. Oftentimes, though, a gimmick dooms a talent <laughs> burden with the role. Here are ten of the worst gimmicks in WWE history. Spirit Squad. Who I said the 90s that. had the market cornered Spirit on terrible Squad? WWE gimmicks? Mm -hmm. In 2006, yep, the Spirit, Spirit Squad, Squad was unleashed yep. on the world with the absolutely terrifying gimmick of a group of male, male cheerleaders. cheerleaders yep. Not that we have a problem with male cheerleaders, but casting them as pro wrestling villains? <sighs> Spirit yeah. Squad, bro. Yeah, this was, yeah, I remember. Uh, the Spirit That's Squad. the worst part I could have paused, but. Yeah, Spirit, Spirit Squad, bro. Squad. Yeah, they did the only noticeable one that I know that's actually doing stuff now is Dolph Ziggler. He was one of the member, members of the Spirit Squad. Granted, um, I mean, by doing something now, he's getting pretty much beat every week by people. But still, <laughs> I mean, he, he he is a former world champion, IC champion. I bring uh, this up every time I faced him. <laughs> I mean, John Cena has brought it up uh, many years ago. Like, you used to be a cheerleader. Now you did. <laughs> I was like, hey, come on, With the John. bars. Come on, John. Don't yeah. don't do that, bro. That was cold. Eh, we don't think so. Amazingly, the squad would have a strong initial push where they won the tag titles before being squashed by DX for the yeah. whole summer and being shipped back to developmental. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Max Moon, looking like a misguided attempt at a Whoa. Mega Man cosplay. What Ma in the fuck? Is I that? thought that was like a little joke when he <laughs> put that. His name is Max Moon. <laughs> what is he though? Well, I, he looked like a video game character from the '80s, bro. Wait a minute. My name is Max Moon. What the? What f is he? You gotta play this. I need to. I need to know more. Oh, wow. Mega Man cosplay. Max Moon flew into the WWE the in 1992 cosplay. with a gimmick truly out yeah, of this world. Build as a man of the yeah. future and sporting a jetpack and fireworks see. shooting. Gun. Whoa. Like I said, I didn't even see the damn gloves. The this is obviously we're babies, you know what I'm saying? Not even really a thought yet around this time, but like the early nineties, eighties, yeah. late eighties, there was a lot of questionable gimmicks. It didn't get really we didn't get to the attitude era to like nine six, nine seven. But I mean he, And that's when things started to ramp up because people got tired of these for the most part, corny, family-friendly gimmicks. What is it? Moon Man? What is his name? <coughs> Max, Max Moon. Moon. He's supposed but to be he, like Mega he Man. He probably would have been live, though. He got stuff no, bro. coming he, out bro, of his... Bro, he was a bro. No. Look. Build is a man no, of the future and sporting lame. a jetpack and fireworks shooting that, that, gauntlets. Max lame, Moon could only bro. come from the insane mind that's of Vince lame. McMahon. <laughs> it might have been care. worthwhile if Moon could use the jetpack and gauntlets during matches, that but sadly, he took them off before wrestling. <laughs> Naked like Midian. That. One day, people what? at the WWE headquarters were presumably doing entirely too much drugs. Sound about Those right. same people also thought that the next logical step after being part of a satanic cult was to wrestle nearly naked. What? Seriously, that was the entire extent of Midian's new gimmick. He would wrestle in a G-string with a fanny pack and no shirt. 
The only reasonable explanation is that a demon was still inside Midian from his ministry days and compelled him to go on with this gimmick. Red Rooster, um, coming to bookstore soon, cock-a-doodle-doo, how to ruin a career with a single gimmick. Terry uh, Taylor was a successful champion in Southern promotions, but once he came to the WWE, Texas. he would soon find himself with the gimmick of the Red Rooster. The moniker spawned off from an insult by Bobby Heenan. Logically, of course, Taylor embraced the name and said he never wanted to be known as Terry Taylor again. All right then. Santa Claus. Red Santa Rooster. Claus has surprisingly, Santa or Claus. maybe unsurprisingly, given WWE's insanity, made lots of appearances on WWE television. Yeah. What less people know about, though, is the appearance of Santa Claus, Santa's evil twin. Rather than give presents, Santa, Santa would steal them, and he also hailed from the South Pole. He would wrestle one match for the company and won it. So technically, Santa Claus was undefeated. Uh, well, at least it was hilarious <laughs> to hear Vince South McMahon Pole. freak out that it wasn't the real Santa. Isaac Yankum. <laughs> Hey, that's Dr. Isaac Yankum to you. Before he would be transformed into one of WWE's greatest characters, Glenn Jacobs was forced into the role of Dr. Isaac Yankum, evil Whoa, dentist. Yankum served as Jerry Lawler's dentist. personal dentist who enjoyed drilling his patients in a cruel fashion. Oh wait, that didn't sound right. Amazingly, his first WWE match was with wow. Bret Hart. Even more amazingly, the gimmick lasted nearly a year before it was finally Jeez, extracted bro. from WWE for good. Bastion wow. Booger. We here at the Sportster believe that through a freak accident, Bastion Vince Booger. McMahon saw Austin Powers years before it came out and loved Fat Bastard. How <laughs> else do you explain Bastion Booger? Mike Shaw's <laughs> former gimmick of a yeah. wrestling monk wasn't much better, but a not quite as bad monk? as this. Allegedly given to Shaw as punishment for his weight problems, Booger was a gross, fat slob who ate everything in sight and had the worst ring gear ever. Oh. His outfit still haunts the dreams of wrestling fans. Akeem the African Dream. One man gang. It ain't a Vince McMahon <laughs> show racism. with a little bit of spicy race. A little dash of racism. <sighs> was a solid upper mid-card heel through the golden age of WWE. In 1988, though, it was decided Gang needed a makeover. And lo and behold, a came the African <sighs> dream was born. It was revealed by his manager Slick that Gang... Slick. Fucking Slick. Like I said, bro. Even though it was still some wild shit in the attitude there, there was a lot of wild shit. Why is it the, the, the characters weren't as as fucking? There was a lot of cringe characters. Then he bro. cool. Then slick cool with this. Yeah. God damn it. Gang was actually African, and that he would return to his roots courtesy of a voodoo ceremony. The ceremony would take place in, and we quote, the deepest, darkest parts of Africa, but really a U.S. ghetto. Anyone feel the need for a shower? Beaver Cleavage. The demographic the for WWE in the Attitude Era was undoubtedly teenagers and 18 to 34 year olds. Oh, now, no. why did WWE think that these age groups would love a parody of an old squeaky clean TV show that nobody <laughs> in those groups know of? When his tag partner Thrasher went down with an injury, Headbanger Mosh was repackaged with the gimmick of Beaver Cleavage, a man who had an incestuous wow. crush on his mom. Thankfully, the gimmick didn't last long, Thank but even God. one segment of this is just too much. The Gobbledygooker, a giant egg that had been teased for weeks, finally hatched in Survivor Series 1990. What came out of the egg? A literal giant turkey. But like, come on, what else could it have been? The reveal went over like a fart in church, and turned to anger as Mean Gene started to dance with the damn thing. Perhaps the scariest thing of all, though, is that The Undertaker debuted the same night as The Gooker. Maybe there's an alternate timeline where... Oh, no, don't even think of that. And that's it for our list. Yep. What do you think Wait is the worst gimmick in WWE history? That's, uh... That's very interesting, man. Nah, that was that was pretty novelty gooker. Yep, yep. That's wow. Yeah, man, Vince. You learn something new every day. Vince definitely was not good when it came to like a lot of these these uh gimmicks. The only one he was he fucking knocked out the part was the Undertaker. <laughs> that was the best gooker. thing he possibly ever came up with. And a lot of people say that, but outside of that, the this novelty. Yeah, man. No? Yeah. Well, you know. I'm still on the African Caesar dude, man. Yeah, man. It's, uh, that's uh, disrespect. Yeah. <clears throat> that's that's Vince for you. Oh, man. Hey, let us know <laughs> if you guys knew about some of these already. If not, let us know down below, man. Mm -hmm. Kind of learning together when it comes to these here. Man. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very interesting history there. For sure, for sure. WWE history. But uh, glad we were able to get past that. So now <laughs> when we do see cringe stuff now, we won't be able to be so judgmental. Because it could be worse. It could, definitely could be worse. But we A catch y'all on the worse. next one, man. <laughs> Keep running with the like, subscribe, share the videos, man. Spread love, be love. Keep God first.
Peace out, man. Alrighty. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen, I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me cause I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside they know they can't handle half of me.